Hello everybody. Welcome to the first edition of the Take Off Fest. Um thank you so much for taking out your time to be with us. I know it's exam season. We all have projects and deadlines and assignments and what not. But I promise you this fest will be worth your time. So so just a quick introduction. I am your host Gayatri and I'm currently working as a talent marketing associate here at Flightbase and I am super excited to onboard you on our flight that will make your career soar high so um before we begin i'm sure most of you are young aspirants who want to build successful careers in tech but we've always been like stuck and we've always been dependent on guidance from our older peers and while our advice might be useful it often sets us out on these traditional outdated paths of building a career and if there is anything we know about today's time it's that traditional is boring I mean with deep tech like AI and drones and blockchain and robotics and what not we need to understand that building a career now requires so much more but again then the question becomes like how do we do it right because internet because the internet has revolutionized learning and education you don't need a masters from the US to be good at robotics or you don't need an MBA from Germany to be like the next marketing guru because all of this gyan is available online now for free of cost right so but then again even with that we we still have so many questions as students right like what to learn how to navigate your career which skills to develop how to how do we optimize our college life how do we prepare ourselves for the real world and which is ex so don't worry that's exactly why we've organized the take off career fest it's to exactly address all these questions that lurk around our minds we are guiding young folks like you to build an amazing career in technology and after today's session you will get deep insights you will get useful hacks and different perspectives to kick start your journey in emerging tech and you know what i suggest everybody grab a cup of coffee maybe even some snacks alongside because the next 3 hours are going to be thrilling for everybody present here and while you do that i'll quickly run by a few housekeeping rules So firstly you may ask questions any time during the presentation by typing them in the YouTube chat window and your questions will be answered in the last 10 minutes of each session if we are under our time limit secondly some exciting quizzes and polls are coming up shortly we highly request everybody to participate uh, third the session is being recorded we'll publish the recorded session on our YouTube channel very soon and finally we have created a discord community for everyone to interact and network so feel free to hop in and communicate with your peers and the link to join our discord channel is also on the chat box um we're also very very happy to announce that we are joined by mr avinash kumar singh the ceo and founder of diy guru and we also like to thank them for being our educational partners for this evening and we'd also like to thank event beep for being a community partner for this event so now before we start let's take a quick look at the agenda for today we'll be conducting six ses six sessions in total uh, we'll be starting with robotics web development then we'll move to marketing and then design and then finally we'll end on a session on how to hack your career uh, from our director of engineering who's going to talk about how do you prepare your profile to get hired at your dream job and i strongly urge everybody you do not want to miss out on that um okay i think i've spoken enough i've i've bugged people enough here um so i hope everybody is ready for this webinar to begin um can people start typing yes in the chat box cool amazing so uh we're going to start with our first session which is going to be on robotics the world keeps running faster and faster which makes it necessary to automate manual processes it's also this need that makes that which is why robotics is predicted to be one of the most lucrative and rewarding careers in coming times which is why i would like to invite amog and havish our lead product engineers here at flight base to teach us on how to automate one's success by building a career in robotics uh, over to you havish and amog hello guys welcome to take off fest we are just a couple of guys really into making autonomous systems also known as robotics enthusiasts and today we'll take you on our journey and share some insights of the robotics industry so that you too can enter the world of robotics Let's start with Amu. Amu, so you are a mechanical engineer from IIT Bombay. How did you end up in a drone automation company? Uh, yes, to answer this initially, welcome everyone to 
our webinar on takeoff and so and on the session on robotics well i am a mechanical engineer from iit bombay i did my bachelor's in technology over there and my journey in robotics has started at iit itself so during my second year i joined a group called as the unmesh mashruwala innovation cell where we primarily used to kind of fiddle with and work with drones so i have had my primary drone experience as well as robotics experience over there uh, we did a lot of work around drone manufacturing and software in, so we did everything from like making drones getting our hands dirty to as well as working with software for drone automation and those three years at associated with this lab at iit were kind of the foundational years which helped me kind of understand about robotics and kind of convinced me that okay i really want to make a career in robotics out of this and with that i think the overall atmosphere present there as well when you see multiple teams making uh, stuff like autonomous underground vehicles to all terrain vehicles as well as teams working on the mars rover for example so all of this was really fascinating to kind of talk to them understand what they are doing so this has been kind of my foundation into robotics and after that i really wanted to continue my work in drones and hence i kind of landed at flightbase since then i have been with flightbase for around a year and a half now working as a robotics engineer and had re- have been doing that since yes so how is your from coap right so how has your journey been is it similar or have you had some really unique experiences that you would like to share here so i joined coap for a degree in electronics electronics and tele- telecommunication Great. but my second year i uh, was introduced to a club called as robot solutions circle and this club is essentially by i am a robotics engineer in this club we built a bunch of projects for societal cause we built a bunch of projects to which would uh, you know were were built on the problem statements be given by different competitions one of the biggest competitions we always used to participate in was robocon and i participated in robocon 17 18 and 19 uh, so robocon 17 we won we came first in india i got a chance okay. to go to tokyo to represent uh, india and that is where the whole exposure of how ro- uh, robotics is viewed by the world community was you know given so it's really amazing to learn and see how people bring uh, how people you know think of robotics so so in my view robotics is where you bring you know the best of computer science electronics and mechanical uh, mechanical engineering fields together to right. build something which can which is which can you know solve problems which can autonomously take smart decisions and perform so we during my 3 years of engineering working in this lab i worked i was exposed to many different kind of sensors actuators multi processor systems we learned how to bring different you know microcontrollers microprocessors and systems together to build one one single robot how to make that ro- robot autonomous how to write the control algorithms how to uh, you know write state machines and things like that so graduating from coap i was looking for an opportunity where i can go on from my college level robotics to somewhere where i can go into industry level robotics that is where i would understand how to take something that you know students built or you know just not a btech project and actually make it something into production which can be a robotic solution for the masses and that's where i found flight base right and thus right. right now i'm here as a robotics engineer previously and now as a lead product engineer Great so wish. and uh, i'm also so I, given our interests in robotics right and we have uh, you know met so many other robotics enthusiasts enthusiasts like us right so what do you think is how do you, how is the industry do you think for people like us what is the future in robotics well i according to me robotics will penetrate every facet of human life in the next 5 to 10 years you see you will be having uh, all kinds of smart autonomous robots doing things that we cannot even fathom of right now with i think drones coming in on the in the commercial drone sector and robotics specifically coming in into manufacturing industrial automation supply chain the entire works so i i genuinely believe that it is an exciting time to be a robotics engineer right now since a lot of this technology which has been which is being built over the last 10 years is now finally coming 
onto the scene and it is actually making live impact so yeah i think it's great time to be a part of this field and right so havish what are your thoughts on this uh, on how robotics will do in the coming years right so i guess i would like to start with uh, you know the let's you know get rid of the basic misunderstandings that people have with respect to robotics okay. many people think that robotics is something that only happens in research labs with white people you know white coat scientists and and really really advanced type of robotics right that is not true robotics there's one type of robotics where you have robotic scientists who are working on building new algorithms building new tools and systems but there are also a whole community of robotics engineers who bring who take these different tools algorithms and technologies available and apply it to existing technologies to make to automate them so for example in an existing factory or a warehouse or an industry there's already a bunch of machines which perform some particular function all of those machines are currently manually operated by people right so a robotics engineer here can contribute by using you know again these uh using the fruits of the research of other people and automating these systems so he doesn't necessarily have right. to be a person who has a phd in any particular field of robotics or masters in robotics he just needs to be a smart engineer who can you know understand right. the requirement and fit a solution according to it the second uh you know the misconception that i believe that most people have is that when they say robotics they think of a humanoid or they think of these uh you know sign you know uh, robots from sci-fi movies now while that is true that is a really exciting part of robotics robot robotics also is very very prominent in just software if you learn how to just okay. use existing mechanical systems to automate them that itself makes your robotics engineer it every single robotics uh, what do you call uh, development doesn't really have to be associated with a mechanical system yeah that is definitely true and a lot of uh, work that is being done in ai specifically is proof of what how the robotics industry is changing to being more software centric definitely mm -hmm. so uh, havish i just wanted to ask you this you see because this question keeps lingering in my mind that uh, you and all of all of us here have been have interacted with robotics engineers have interacted with them during our college days during our time at flight base as well yes so what do you think that makes a good robotics engineer stand out and right. how do you kind of get into this field right that's an excellent question that's an excellent question that every single person in our audience should ask themselves if you are in generally interested in technology doesn't matter if you have any history of it you have any kind of you know prior education to it or anything if you're just interested and you really want to know how it works what makes it tick you are well on your path that would you know get you interested into learning how these things come together and that's how you can you know try to to bring your solutions to the same problem statement yeah that's a really great way that you have put it i just like to want add a couple of th points that i have kind of gathered from people and through my experience as well i yes, think that people when they have a kind of inclination towards various aspects of robotics is you know robotics is not very centric to mechanical in today's time there mm -hmm. is a huge software component to it there is a huge electronics component to it right. and only when people would have that kind of an interest in all of these aspects would that really kind of put them up a notch in this entire ladder of robotics as a sec as a field like you could contribute at multiple levels and being having that multi dimensional quality really helps you yes yes so amo we yes. are talking to a really uh, you know college audience right we have people yes. in from first year second year third year fourth year what would be your best advice to these students about how they can you know get themselves introduced to the uh, introduced to robotics and how robotics and how they can make a career in it well i would really recommend that uh, participating in certain competitions participating in robotics events in festivals or such is really important as that is the way at this point to get your hands dirty in the field and since this is such an applied area it is highly difficult to kind of navigate the entire robotics field by through only theory so i really feel that there is a huge learning opportunity in kind of going out of your way going out of your regular curriculum and engaging yourself in such competitions so like we mentioned initially as well like you had a lot of your 
learning experience in Robocon. So those are the experiences that are really necessary. I also feel that with this, and many people have this question, if he, because I, if someone doesn't know certain very basic fundamentals, you would be hesitant to kind of go there. But I feel that nowadays with online learning and a lot of these platforms coming up, most of this knowledge is available and not, and there is no hindrance as such with very particular formal courses that need to be taken up to kind of get started into robotics. So uh, that would be my advice, essentially, just like uh, kind of just jump into the pool, get your hands dirty. And that is how you would can uh, grow in this. Exactly. Uh, that's that's the best advice we can uh, probably give to everybody out there. Get your hands dirty. Try building your own systems, right? It's really like Amok said, the theory is not it's not going to help you all the way. Other than that, robotics is a very wide field, wide field, right? If you have a particular interest, like if you want to work on soft robotics or if you want to work on modular robotics, you can always find people who are already working on it somewhere or the other. They might be in a company, they might be in a university, like a professor who is doing his PhD in such kind of uh, field. Uh, you can always apply for internships, uh, research assistantships, and try to get try to get some work under them. And that would really, you know, introduce you, you introduce you to what exactly happens there, and you would be able to learn if this is the field for you. Great. Yes. So uh, I think a lot of our uh, audience would also like to know about what we do here at Flightbase. Yes. So Havish, if you could shed some light on that, and uh, what is our what does our day look like? What do we do here in robotics? So really help them. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so our job is literally the implementation of robotics at a global scale, right? So for example, what do we do? So flight-based automates drone operations. Now drones are an existing hardware that already exists in the industry and people have been using them for years to help gather data, to help with surveillance and to, uh, you know, drones are the first things when there's an emergency and many such applications. Yes. What we do, is we try to automate all of these operations so that the people who want these services do not have to rely on people on you know pilots who have specific licenses and it's just get it keeps getting expensive it's not scalable you cannot have 10000 pilots who can do a certain thing if the problem is that large right so okay. what we at flightbase do is we try to automate these operations such that the pilots are not really required we have our own algorithms, we have our own software, which can control the drone through its motions and bring it back safely. So then now, because you don't need a pilot, you don't need 10,000 people. And hence you can actually scale your operations to that size. This is a really real life application of, you know, robotics, because it's, you're automating a whole system with, uh, and you're taking humans kind of out of the equation. Amog, you can yeah. shed some more that's, light on this. That's really great. So. Kind of, as Havish mentioned, there is tremendous and huge scale potential in what we do here at Flightbase. And uh, coming back to the robotics part, it is really interesting as to what we do here because since it is a very nascent industry, we have a lot of uh, new challenges that come up day in, day out. So every day is kind of new for us. We get to see new behaviors, get to work on new challenges and kind of figure out solutions to new problems. So this thing, is something that really helps me be motivated to kind of work towards this common goal of having a drone automated platform. And yeah, so I guess with that, I think the kind of team that we have here, we are really a bunch of kind of passionate people who like working on these problems, like putting, getting our hands dirty into unknown territories. And yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it for what we do here at Flightbase. I think with that, Havish, we can come to a quick summary of what we have discussed here today. Yes. We'll sure. be putting up a slide for it. Right. Here we go. So, yeah, we have three main points for all of you, which you should be uh, exploring to your greatest potential. The first, the first is hands-on is more important than academic learning, like we mentioned many times during the talk. Yes. Uh, the second is be inquisitive, always be ready to learn. You should almost never say something like this is out of my department or this is something that it's not my business. 
be out there, be learn, be inquisitive about what ha- what's happening. And then, yeah, as the last point already mentions that while we when we spoke about how to build up a career in robotics, there is no very specific curriculum that you can follow to make this happen. It is through hands-on learning. So we really urge you guys to kind of participate in competitions, projects, hackathons, all of this out there. Take up internships in companies, take up internships uh, to kind of get a feel of how robotics is and are you are you willing to kind of commit to that and are a good fit for it? So do you think these are the key takeaways for us uh, from our side to you guys? And I, um, that's it from me and Havish. Over to you, Gayatri. Hi. So uh, few of you had some questions. questions. Uh, the first question is, I am working as a Java developer. How can I switch to robotics? So, like I said previously, just get into it, right? There are many uh, problems online that you can, that might uh, be your fancy. Like maybe you have to build, maybe you have a crow that sits outside your house every day and, you know, uh, disturbs your sleep, right? And you want to build a small system which throws water at it every time it, it grows. That's a very easy thing to do. And the thing is, that's the kind of solutions you solve. So just pick up something like this, like, like that, and learn the skills, whatever you need to solve that problem. And on the way, you'll learn whatever is required, which makes you good with the hardware part and the software, and you'll be on your way. Um, We have another question coming in. As a fresher mechanical engineer, what would make me stand out and be considered a top candidate for the position of robotics engineer at Flightbase? Uh, Right, I think I'll take this question up. So. Uh, Being a mechanical engineer myself, I think uh, just limiting yourself to the mechanical engineering domain would not necessarily work, uh, would not work for at flight base, but essentially not at any company doing robotics in at a scale and production level because uh, robotics inherently is interdisciplinary. And so being from a mechanical background, we would obviously have a better knowledge of mechanical systems, but you will also need to get a lot of uh, kind of practical experience when it comes to electronics, when it comes to software, how all of these things kind of gel together to make a final product. And that I think is possible through again, engaging in student communities, engaging in competitions and kind of getting, getting into it, making, do, doing projects. So even if it is not through a competition, you could do hobby projects for yourself kind of just like Havish mentioned in the previous question, pick up a problem and try to solve it. So with this approach, I think being even, uh, so after this approach, I think the mechanical engineering degree won't matter anymore. And that would kind of make you in future really a top candidate for a position at flight base. Well, uh, thank you so much, Havish. Thank you so much, Amok, for conducting this session. I think that was a very insightful conversation. I'm sure students across various robotic societies would be very much glad to get these insights from you guys. So um, if, if, if our viewers want to connect with Havish and Amok, I would urge you to join our Discord server. The link should be coming up in the chat box anytime now. And uh, with that, I think we can move to our second session. Um, So I would like to introduce our second session, which is how to take off your career in web development. Uh, We all know that the web is everywhere, right? Like from ordering your food to attending classes to hailing a cab, I mean, whatnot. But what we don't know is that web is also becoming a critical part of emerging technology. I mean, if we dive deeper, you would be surprised to know that the latest Falcon 9 spaceship from SpaceX also uses JavaScript and Chromium for the dashboard which which astronauts operate. So yes, web, it is the interface which would connect humans with drones, robots, home appliances, cars, etc. And it's it's quite interesting, which is why I would like to invite Abhishek and Girish from Flightbase to talk about leveraging web technology and building a career in deep tech. Um, over to you, Abhishek and Girish. Thanks, Gayatri. So before starting with how web development actually comes into picture at our flight base and 
in drone autonomy uh, let's introduce and make viewers aware of what our experience have been where we were where we did our education and what we are so girish uh, let's start with you yeah sure abhi so as uh, yeah i work as a full stack developer at flightbase and uh, i have been into this particular domain for around two and a half years now uh, i completed my uh, b from a psd uh, in entc major in 2019 and uh, yeah i like got to work on iot platform since then and then i did uh, certain uh, like uh, pgd programs from uh, uh, iit bangalore and all. so yeah uh, why don't you introduce yourself abhishek yeah so uh, hi everybody i am abhishek uh, i did my graduation long time back i have an experience of around 7 years uh, in the it industry uh, my graduation uh, i did in computer engineering from uh, government college of engineering so that's about me uh, did i hear you right girish uh, you have done your graduation in electronics engineering right yeah that's right so so how how does that work meaning ideally your uh, education was concentrated concentrated uh, around electronics while here you are into web development so i don't see a relation could you explain to the viewers how <laughs> that works right so uh, during my uh, higher secondary uh, secondary days uh, i remember automation was a buzzword uh, people used controllers to kind of automate certain processes Uh, there were assembly lines uh, using uh, automation as their uh, prime function uh, i used to watch this series uh, named how it's made on uh, D- uh, discovery channel and i was like kind of uh, totally into it and i decided to pursue entc uh, degree since and uh, later during my uh, engineering days i like kind of got uh, introduced to the uh, world of internet of things how it is changing how it is like uh, being a revolution uh, in the automation uh, industry how people are uh, getting to know it and uh, then like uh, yeah so uh, i also realized that the software is kind of a bridge between uh, the end user and the tech because it provides the interface that the end user needs to automate or uh, kind of work with the tech so uh, i decided to be better at programming i took up certain uh, software projects i always preferred uh, project based learning because like uh, i thought uh, yeah i think that that's the way to uh, pursue learning and i enrolled in a certain project completion so i remember there this was uh, i like uh, enrolled myself uh, in a uh, eentra project uh, which was uh, like making the dynamics of the drones total autonomous so uh, like i got to code uh, the dynamics and uh, to make the uh, movements of the drone autonomous which was quite uh, exciting and then later i joined a company which was which had its own saas product uh, uh, like educated towards uh, internet of uh, things platform and uh, yeah so i got to learn about saas world and how like the how it is making an impact and all and then later i joined flightbase which is kind of uh, the uh, combination of internet of drones as well as uh, the uh, saas product that that uh, flightbase has so it uh, like kind of perfectly fits my interest so yeah this is how i am here so during so, your uh, course or the four year degree uh, did somebody tell you that you need to work on drones was it your inherent interest or did you slowly discover that you like working with drones and all yeah so uh, as i mentioned like uh, the, it was the project that uh, made that kind of created the interest so Uh, we were given a hobby drone and we uh, were just given a problem statement that you need to automate you need to uh, move this particular drone from point a to point b without having any controller or any uh, human intervention in between so uh, like it was quite quite exciting and uh, me and my team used to work day and night to achieve that <laughs> so uh, there was a lot of learning happening so yeah like that that's what generated the interest and yeah. right. okay. so uh, abhishek like uh, Uh, you mentioned that you have uh, a lot of experience working in various domains across various roles so can you like uh, put uh, how was your experience in work uh, in this whole uh, domain mm-hmm. sure so uh, i started my career with a company which was into telecommunications domain so basically we built billing software for the telecommunication software telecommunication providers and then i moved to a company which did con- conversational uh, basically provided platform for conversations 
then i moved to conversational ai and then to it security so and now finally into drone autonomy so all these years i've been dealing with softwares which was built for data uh, for the computer by the computer so basically it didn't have any physical entity in the world it was all uh, playing with data and building something so the worst that could happen was uh, there's something not coming up on the web page or there's something incorrect with the data but now mm-hmm. what excites me at flight base is here we the level of quality with the code the level of resiliency that is required in our code at flight base is at a level which i don't in my career of 7 years i've never seen the code that has a direct impact on the physical world for example uh, if our code is not written in the way it should be then tomorrow there could be fires happening because of drone yeah. falling so that is the thing and it's really challenging you know earlier yeah. uh, i have not really worked in such kind of a environment where people could be actually there could be life altering things with drones or with anything so that is one thing that is a real difference in the so basically domain. we can see the direct impact happening on the actual hardware whenever we maybe change line of code yes yes exactly that's great great to hear okay so uh, i have one question girish for you so uh, mm-hmm. you are a web developer right so yeah and drones are at the physical entities in the world how, how does that work i mean uh, i always thought that uh, flight base as a company was a drone it will build some drones it will fly some drones you will have pilot, pilot, pilots pilots flying where does web exactly come in this whole jigsaw right so uh, like uh, the systems that uh, currently uh, or maybe in earlier days the uh, systems that were present so people had this panels with uh, certain uh, buttons physical buttons where uh, each button had certain controls or control over the whole system maybe there was a feed uh, on which uh, the uh, there was certain like uh, kpi points and all uh, which were like displayed now uh, the problem with this was uh, it was at a fixed location and user need user had to go to that particular location to kind of uh, operate the whole system now in order to achieve the total autonomy or like uh, the uh, in order to kind of uh, go into internet of things side uh, why don't uh, we have this particular thing hosted somewhere and a user can operate uh, the uh, the product uh, like globally uh, from any point so maybe we can have a desktop application or we can have a website uh, and users can just log in you can, they can just uh, change certain configurations and they can uh, kind of make changes into the current state of the system so this is where the role of web developer comes into the picture so we cannot like uh, tell users to uh, maybe uh, go and manually uh, do the battery swap or manually turn on the drone so there has to be certain interface through which users can maybe click a button and uh, there will be uh the uh, the inner tech will kind of uh make the change in the actual hardware so uh, the basically the features that you can see on the uh, platform the kind of hosting or uh, all the like business logic and all that has to be taken part by uh, that has to be taken care by the web developer that that is where like i come into picture great uh, nice yeah, yeah. so uh, abhishek yeah like uh, you are one of the uh, senior members uh, uh, in the in flight base and uh, you uh, kind of hire people for full stack roles uh, in flight base so uh, can you just like shed some light on how can a person land a job in flight base so uh, there are a few qualities that we look uh, when a person comes for an interview or when uh, we screen his profile uh, the most important thing that we look for is his ability or his willingness to take initiatives so uh, i understand there are projects during the college course where you do there are some final year projects there will be some uh, mid year projects all of those are good but apart from those regular college projects how willing is he to take initiatives and build something apart from those so extra curricular projects basically i'm looking for mm-hmm. is participation in i believe my colleagues earlier in the ses- robotic session has already mentioned this that uh, 
these things these initiate willingness to take initiatives participation in external pro, external competitions all of these are great uh, qualities that we look as a, a future flight based employee so yeah. uh, that is uh, two important things the other thing that we look is uh, if he shares the vision that we have uh, so our vision is very clear we want drone autonomy uh, so we are building a platform which is which does not exist as of now so you might have heard of company there are multiple companies offering multiple services uh, so there are earlier it started with software as a service and then finally c pass c cas conversation as a service platform as a service instances as a service now block my, uh, mining as a service everything has become a cloud service but yeah. what we are here providing is a platform which can actually uh, it doesn't exist as of now there's no service which does this drone automation automation so yeah. we want the candidate to share a vision of building a great software that should be one thing that we look for ki uh, we want to build a platform which does not exist and we want to be, build an amazing product so he has to say, share that same vision with us that is another thing right maybe he should take part in the architectural discussions he should bring up certain processes and uh, yeah the candidate should be like enthusiastic enough yeah so enthusiasm comes as a part where he so a person who's willing to take initiatives is going out of the way so you get a degree you get 98 percentile good but if he's go if he's ready to go that extra mile it really shows that it's a very good quality in the candidate so that is uh, another yeah. thing you know uh, yeah. uh, so one uh, question i've been like it's been itching uh, me uh, do you get to actually fly the drones or you just code on the browser and uh, the, your job is done somebody else flies uh, fly the drone no so uh, we actually get to fly the drones and uh, so uh, like yeah any feature that we develop uh, we need to test it on the real hardware right so we can't just write the code and forget about it and leave it to someone else so it's an interdisciplinary approach so yeah so we uh, test it on the real drone uh, and we also get to fly the drone but obviously are done uh, under like uh, supervision of certain uav pilot because this like we are talking about industry grade uh, drones and not uh, just hobby drones and uh, if you are like someone uh, who likes gaming then uh, it's a whole different experience flying a drone so yeah uh, it's a good thing yeah great i, I think we've given en yeah. enough information to all our viewers uh, over to gayatri uh, if you have any questions hi abhishek and girish uh, so uh, i have uh i think abhishek like before okay. moving on to uh, q and a like uh, yeah we can Hello, kind of, uh, yes. yeah yeah you are already that so, so that is like sorry uh, yeah uh, before like uh, going into the q and a we can just like uh, uh, give some key takeaways uh, to the discussion sure. that we have yeah. sure sure so yeah uh, i think like a uh, few of the key takeaways uh, would be like project based learning is uh, one of the thing that uh, beginners should be focusing on i guess because that's how uh, you will be learning about the tech and what is happening uh, around the world uh, second point would be the uh, basics that uh, you should uh, like kind of focus on because uh, that's how you can build certain things on the top of it uh right. yeah uh, other than that is the adaptability uh, that you need to be that you need to have as a full as a full stack developer or a web developer because there are certain new things coming up uh, each and every day and uh, yeah you need to be on track on the top of each and everything and uh, yeah apart from this having that uh, particular mindset about exploring things is also important and yeah you should be into this into this yeah that's it 
yeah yeah we can like take the q and a hi i think we were just facing some small technical issues uh, but never mind we do have a question coming in so the question is that are really strong coding skills important to build a career in drones abhishek would you like to take that yeah so i don't really understand uh, you can't really quantify a really good or really strong coding skills so i'll just uh, take a i'll quantify it myself so in general really strong coding skills one can learn during the job on the job more or less it's really impossible to find a candidate who will know the whole stack so there are at least 20 technologies that we use i believe even as a web developer because it's a startup we have uh, to do everything we just don't in a multi, in a big company there would be teams which would be responsible for deployment there will be team responsible mm. for technology uh, upgradation there will be team responsible for just coding but as a startup here girish has to wear all the hats he has to code he has to integrate it he has to also deploy it so i believe more than uh, really strong coding skills it is important okay in short the answer is no really strong coding skills are not necessary but ability to learn coding <coughs> at an average level is necessary because it's really impossible for one to know everything at a really great level but one has to know one thing really good and rest all could complement that technology so that that would be the answer yeah uh, i would like to add two things like uh, as even avisha uh, namog mentioned that project based learning is something that should be focused and uh, eventually like uh, like to start a project you need to have certain uh, coding skills uh, otherwise like you will not be able to even start the project so yeah that's what i mean. well thank you so much abhishek thank you so much girish for conducting the session um the session has honestly brought so much okay never mind um i think if you have questions for abhishek and girish hit us up on our discord server uh, they'll be available there the link should be coming up in the chat as i speak um given that let's move on to our third session that we've lined up for you so, so during, during your college, college events or tests if you're the one who always comes up with creative ideas to market solutions uh, then i think this session is perfect for you because deep tech startups offer some of the best marketing job opportunities out there i mean no matter where you are in your career journey and through this session you will learn how one can use their technical knowledge and marketing mind to growth hack their career with a global deep tech brand uh, so to conduct this session i would like to invite achil and basil to talk more on this Hi everybody! Thanks for joining uh, us today. Hope you can hear me. Basil, can you hear me? Yes, I'm sure you're audible. Great, great. Good to have a tech check done really quick. Okay, let's get started with this. So, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how to build your career in marketing in deep tech. So, Basil, so why don't you start with your introduction first? What has been your journey and what you're doing currently at Flightbase? Sure. Hey Achal and everyone else who's joined us, I'm happy to be here. So what I do here is digital marketing. Since we are a small team, I often take up multiple roles such as web design, social media, event management, and a lot of little other things. So for this session, I think the best way I can give you insight into building your career is through my own personal experience. Because a presentation loaded with career stats where I tell you exactly where you need to do. where you want to be in your career is not always useful or relatable so let's start with college i did a degree in computer applications and you must be thinking what's a guy who did his degree mostly in programming doing in marketing let me tell you what i do right now is not so far from programming digital marketing is composed of a lot of different areas you know the usual the social media this newsletter this blogs etc but literally the most important aspect that everyone kind of overlooks is the website web design is my forte and it's what i love doing i here at flight base i design and develop the whole experience of the web a website how i look at it is the store 
for your product to be open 24 seven. What you put in it, how you arrange those things across the store, what kind of people come to visit, that's pure marketing. Most, if not all, when they visit a website, each word, image, graphic, button is placed strategically, trying out several mood boards, visual hierarchies, and most importantly, past viewer data. Building a website is an absolute art, and I've had great fun figuring out what works best with slide base because every product is different end of the day. That's great, Basil. Uh, th this is a great insight. So currently you are developing uh, websites, right? Where you actually work with technology. So what kind of technologies do you work with? So right now I'm working with technologies that are low code or you can more say no code. Okay. So there are, I don't usually code. I love the I love the logic about things, but I do not write the code. I do not learn syntax about things. I just use the code. I just go through the code and uh, makes minor edits and just go along it. I do not code at all. Okay, interesting. We'll take a deep dive into that. Let me just give a quick introduction on my behalf. Uh, so I've been working with Bytebase for almost six years. So it's been a long time. Uh, I started my education, did my education in computer science, but I did robotics. I took part in competitions, made a lot of drones. And at the end of it, I was really uh, confused uh, back there five years, six years ago that where should I now go and work in the industry? Because there was hardly any company or companies who are actually working in the robotics field. And I wanted to do something which is a mixture of everything. It should be a techno commercial role. So I ended up uh, joining the team at Flightbase, and that was the beginning inception of Flightbase, where we were building these kind of platform, making drones autonomous, and that has been the journey so far. So uh, uh, what I have realized over the time is uh, there are a number of factors where your technical background, your ability to market things, to understand customer solution, all of this comes together in one box, and that is how you can build uh, a great career in marketing. We'll go into details as we speak. Right. So basically, why don't you just share your day-to-day -day workflow, right? You just spoke about no code, low code. So what are the things that you're doing as a marketer uh, who has a good uh, understanding of design as well as coding? Right. I think being comfortable working and hacking your way through different tools and other bits of research is essential to building a global brand. And you learn a lot while doing that. When I joined Flightpace, I was just designing and developing websites. Like I used to get the flow and I'm just supposed to convert it without doing any research about it and just doing what I was told to do. And I found that that wasn't the most efficient way to go along it. So after a few months, I realized it's very important to streamline the whole web design process of here at Flightbase. So it really helps all the concerned stakeholders to stay in loop and also helps things get at a really fast pace. After trying out several ideas, I came up with a process that works for our team best. And it's safe to say like everyone loves it here. And another important aspect that I dis discovered while designing the workflow is that I love working with tools and find little hacks that make my job a little easier. And I think that is really important because we shouldn't allocate our time into things that can be automated at this age. And this has really helped me. And that is where the no code movement comes in because I can create websites without writing a single line of code. And it can be done in a much, much faster way. All I need to do is understand how the code works, understand the logic behind things. I press buttons and the code works for me. Like the code is written by me with a few clicks of button. So that is where my knowledge in computers helps me here in marketing very much. Like it never, it has never gone in vain, to be honest. That's interesting. So essentially you are saying whatever logic or the UI UX or the experience uh, that you have gained through building some kind of software or websites before, now you are actually implementing it without writing a code. So how can right. somebody today uh, kind of start this out, right? Where they, they could be right now 
in, in computer science or they are interested in building website and software, they want to get into something which is fairly technical. So how can this experience kind of help students who are just starting out, right? So how can they get started? What kind of technologies they should look at if they are looking to do something with a low code or no code uh, kind of platforms? So I would say first, you should understand how code works before even, you know, getting into the nitty gritty of what tool or anything you should use. You should know how the web works first. And just to be honest, just it's everything's a YouTube search away, like just search for YouTube videos, just go about it and just build something like be consistent with it. And what I would really add here is it is really important to intern. It's a great platform to experiment and try out new things. I had never interned before I joined Flightbase. So I only liked what I had tried so far. That was just development, not even web design. That's when something I started over here. Once I got the platform to experiment and the right team to give me the constructive feedback, I was able to discover my likes and dislikes. I tried an array of things here and there. I didn't like a few, but I loved many. So don't ever regret trying out new things that you're curious about. Like this is how I also started. Even if you didn't like what you tried, you'd at least know what you don't like and just move on with it and try on other things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. Right. So let's move on to uh, talking about since there are a lot of students who are joining uh, the session. Right. So we would have to talk about a few indicators, right? How do we identify in ourselves that uh, uh, you have that kind of inclination towards marketing? So let me take that up. Uh, so if if you're currently at the stage where you're part of a lot of college fests, right? There are a lot of college fests, robotic competitions that are happening and you really like enjoying those uh, uh, events, right? Organizing those events, as well as you are a highly part of uh, sponsorship teams, marketing team, maybe you have inclination towards graphic design, uh, and uh, you could be designing websites, or you could be designing posters, uh, you could be good at writing content, uh, technical content, or engaging content, or make videos. If you are doing something right now, and you're still right now in engineering, you can actually build a great career in deep tech, because Deep tech startups or the company is required a thorough understanding of a product because ultimately marketing is understanding the customer behavior, uh, the psychology, what's going to ring with them. And you have to understand the technology, what are the, its applications, and then design something which could talk to uh, the customer in the same language. So if you are already uh, in, in those lines, you should definitely consider a career in marketing where you can leverage your technical skills as well as experiment a lot and learn a lot in the marketing. What are your thoughts based on this? Definitely, definitely. You should go ahead and try out new things. That's only what I say because digital marketing in itself is a very wide, it consists of a wide array of things. So you should try experimenting first and just go one, one, one thing at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So uh, let me uh, point out a few items where how can you start preparing or focus on areas that will get you internships or job in deep tech, right? So I had a, a quick slide. Let me see if I can share that uh, from here. Just a second. Yes, it's up here. So if you take a closer look to this one, we talk about the key takeaways and how you can build your career. So first of all, the concept here is as engineers, you can flourish as marketeers, right? So there are a lot of deep tech uh, companies who are working on drones, AI, robotics, blockchain, and various different technologies. So as an engineer, you have a thorough understanding of how that tech works. Now you need to find out some find some indicators where you could be doing marketing in college events. You love designing website or graphics. You are really good with writing content or creating an engaging content. It could be like blogs. It could be videos. It could be graphics, infographics, etc. And now you would have to start focusing on a few key items or uh, learning few. Uh, skills. So if you go to see, learn and explore, there are a few items where you can explore these kind of uh, uh, relevant skills, which would come handy to get you internships. So you could be, you could start learning about content marketing. How can you 
uh, write content, make a content and make it engaging and then share it uh, and promote it uh, across the channels. You can get into a technical stuff where you can learn about SEO, that is the search engine optimization or uh, SEM, where search engine marketing, where you can make sure that your website is always ranked up on the search engines like Google, Bing, etc. Of course, that requires a thorough understanding of how search engine works, what are the new algorithms that are coming out uh, from the search engine providers like Google. And then there are various techniques where you can apply to make uh, your website rank top on that. There's plenty of material available on this. If you're really good with people, you, can sh you should certainly focus on building social media and ads. Uh, where you can learn more how what kind of strategies work, how can you actually collaborate with influencers uh, as well as create content which is really engaging for social media. Uh, one more thing, engineering is marketing. This works for a lot of companies where uh, you actually build tools which uh, market your product, where there could be tools where uh, people can come and create their website and then you offer a solution to improve their website. So there are a lot of things when you would start learning more of engineering is marketing, you can actually use your engineering skills to create tools with bring in, which brings engagement to your product. And after learning and exploring this, you can apply and grow at different levels. So you can have internships, you can apply for them uh, through various channels, <coughs> different platforms. Look for the companies who are working in deep tech because that way you would actually work with a technology and market that those products and solutions. Uh, before that, you can also create and grow your own website, social media, or YouTube. So any particular marketer that I have seen has his own page or website because you need to experiment a lot. You need to actually create your own website and see how you can actually scale that. Basically, you have something to add? No, I just started out with my own portfolio. So like, that's how I, yes. I just wanted to put it out there. <laughs> right. Like when right. I joined here, I didn't have a resume. Like Achal itself looked at my portfolio. He didn't have my resume as such. Like just having a conversation. That's how it ended up here. Right, right. That really helps because if you're uh, coming from a technical background and uh, you are actually looking to uh, get into marketing, uh, marketing, you would have to experiment a lot. Everybody that I've seen in past, they have really thorough understanding. They have created, experimented. They have run ads on from Facebook to Google to Instagram. And that's how you learn. And of course, there is a big community out there where you can join groups uh, and learn uh, from different people. Uh, but yeah, that that is how you learn marketing. You apply and then could grow. And that's how you grow hack. So I think that's, that's about it. That's what we have uh, for you, everybody. Uh, you can, of course, take quick questions if there are any free questions or move to the next session. So we do have some questions. Uh, first one, that's in, what are some tools one must get a grasp on to get into marketing? Hmm, okay. So, of course, when you say marketing, it's a very broad thing, right? So I actually segregate it into multiple areas. Uh, if you pick uh, something related to SEO, there is a whole tool set uh, where you could be using a lot of tools for SEO to see the, uh, your backlinks, uh, see your traffic and different kind of items. Uh, if you're looking at content marketing, then of course there are specific, uh, uh, first of all, your content, the way you make it, it could be videos, graphics, you can make, if you're just uh, good with the creating infographics, you can use something like Canva to create that and start promoting that through your channels. So uh, different tools for different things. Uh, of course, uh, this question needs to be specific where you are uh, getting into uh, the marketing and we, I can help you with that. Feel free to connect with me on Discord if you have particular interest in marketing and you have relevant skills and I'd be able to share some tools which would actually help you uh, start, start experimenting. Uh, we have another question actually. Can you recommend some content to learn marketing or some books or some videos? There is plenty, right? You can follow people like Neil Patel, that, uh, .com. there are a lot of material available. Just go online. There are different courses that are available and do it as a, you just apply it as you learn it, right? So keep learning, keep applying. Best is start creating your own website and then start, try to rank it. Pick a niche and then try to rank it. 
make your Instagram page try to grow it. There are different hacks available. There are different people available who talk about it. Pick one thing, and there is definitely a lot of content available. But just getting through a book or watching a video may not help. You have to pick one thing and then see relevant content and hack things up, and that's how you grow hack. I think yeah, we have to try to take another question. What is deep tech? What exactly is it, and how is it different from other web SaaS companies or even Web three point oh? Hmm, interesting. So when we look at deep tech, these are the technologies which are going to which is going to make the future, right? So when you look at deep technology, these are complex technologies which involve multiple things together. For example, robotics. Right, so robotics is something where you have uh, in technically, of course, have hardware, software, autonomy, web, cloud, everything coming together. So when you look at AI, robotics, drones, blockchain, these are things which would be technology of the future, right? Uh, and th th these are the things that come deep, deep, even space exploration. So people who are building emerging technologies which require the amalgam of multiple technologies together is something uh, which you can call deep tech. And in particular, when you st start your career, right, there could be things where you could be just working on a typical SaaS company who's just providing you, uh, could be a tool to communicate, right? Or it could be a food tech company, or it could be a, a cab hailing company. All those things come under uh, the stand web or companies where we have seen the e-commerce boom, we have seen the food tech boom, all of that has happened and there are uh, again a lot of leaders who have grown into that space now there is an opportunity for a new set of leaders to create next set of industries right so where you can actually get into details of how the technology works and then you can build career maybe in robotics maybe in web development marketing designs etc and that's the theme of uh, the entire event today uh, so you can get a better perspective uh, of of deep tech. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you so much, Achal and Basil, for conducting this. I'm sure we have a lot of engineers in the audience who are now going to build their careers in techno marketing. So, um, if anybody has questions, if they want to contact Achal and Basil, they can join our Discord server and contact them there. And with that, I think we can move on to our fourth session now, which is on design. So I'm pretty sure there are plenty of students in the audience who have a knack for design or are already pursuing a career in design. And these are the people who are usually like they're known as the cool poster people in college. They're well equipped with Photoshop and UI, UX graphics and stuff like that. Um, so to teach you or to learn how to wireframe your career in design, uh, I would now like to invite Danish and Shresh uh, to conduct the session. Anish, hello. Uh, I'm audible. I can't hear you. Hello, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Danish uh, and I work as a creative head at Flightbase. Hi everyone, I am Shresh and I work as a senior product designer at Flightbase. Welcome to Takeoff. Uh, today we are going to talk about how to build your career in design. Uh, all right then, let's take off. Um, of course. Yeah. Right, yeah. So uh, let's get started with the basics. Now what is design? Uh, design is a story behind a person or an object or an environment. Uh, it's the creative science that has no specific, well-defined path or process. Uh, at the core of it, uh, it is problem solving. And the interesting thing that uh, is very curious to the mind is that uh, every problem is different. Uh, there's no solution that answers every, every question or uh, every process that is there. So uh, for me, design is empathizing with people and understanding the problem, keeping in mind different factors like uh, psychology, uh, heuristics, human behavior, intention, accessibility, and whatnot. OK, wow, this was a serious explanation. Uh, it reminds me of a quote by this designer that I follow. Uh, he says that a designer is an individual 
Gupta's precise guesswork based on unreliable data provided by those of questionable knowledge. <laughs> While that sounds like a joke, sometimes it's true. A designer's job is not just to make something look good, it's also to take whatever information is given to them and make visual sense of it. Uh, it it's what differentiates a designer from an artist. Right, right. Uh, but Danish, how are you a designer today? Didn't you do a master's in computer application? Yeah, so the story goes, uh, let me begin with my school days. Uh, I was an average kid with average marks, zero in computers. Uh, would literally get sick whenever the subject came up. <laughs> Not kidding. Uh, so in class 11, uh, I had the subject related to computer hardware. And that's what got me interested in computers and technology. Uh, one day when my mom asked me, have you thought of what to do after school? I immediately said I want to do something in the field of computers. She was shocked. Uh, but you know, eventually my parents were really supportive, even though they believed that this guy is just dreaming. Um, so yeah, I started with BCA, ended up in masters. It was all going good until I came across this crazy artist on Instagram, uh, named Post Logic. And I swear looking at his work was enough to intrigue me. I just had to give it a try. Uh, initially I knew nothing about it. I simply started with YouTube tutorials, replicated other artist styles. And to push myself and make it a regular practice, I made an Instagram page. And suddenly, within one and a half year, I had 6K followers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that engagement was pretty huge motivator in deciding that that's what I want to do with my life. Um, OK, enough about me. <laughs> Tell me about your story so far. You've always been into design, haven't you? Yes, yes, Danish, I have. First of all, Boss Logic, he's really great. I've been following him for a while now. Um, uh, I was inspired by a person called uh, Espen Oxholm. So he's a CG artist. He's based out of Denmark. Uh, and uh, uh, he's into rendering and all that. And uh, in my school, I was uh, very interested in uh, how, how, how do 3D models work and how do renders work and stuff like that. So. Uh, I started out uh, with design uh, and uh, I was also into materials and stuff at school. So uh, naturally I uh, chose design as a career uh, to pursue. So I went to college for that. Um, but initially, uh, you know, I, I in college, I thought I'd made a huge mistake because uh, the first couple of months were uh, only about uh, drawing and sketching and all that. And I was not great, great at it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it took a lot of time for me to uh, get a hang of it and uh, uh, slowly pick things up and uh, yeah, things just went on. Uh, so uh, uh, during my college, I published a lot of research papers in ergonomics and I had an amazing faculty that helped me get to design patents. Uh, also, I led a team uh, called CANSAT uh, in a competition called CANSAT. Uh, this happened in NASA, uh, in US. Uh, so, uh, 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 talking about industry, I had interned at several places. Uh, I designed furniture at Curlon. I have created uh, different DIY toys uh, at a startup called Be Creative. And uh, I've also designed milk trucks for rural uses uh, at Mobile Hospital Designers. And uh, uh, I moved on to uh, complex projects uh like yeah like aerospace systems uh like i work here um so i've been exposed to most kinds of designs uh but there's a difference between uh being interested in something and uh choosing something uh to be in your career so uh danish what inspired you to pivot to design as a career choice uh so yeah um i did start tinkering on photoshop uh making every random thing on it whether it was the right app for it or not logos, brochures, whatnot on that. But I love doing it. Uh, and somehow that was enough. And that's what I believe in. You need to find something you love doing. And you won't know what you like unless you do it. Uh, some students decide their future without even trying to see if they like it or not. The only reason behind that is they start comparing 
and ask for advice from people who are not even in that particular field. Questions like, kitna scope milega, kitna scope hai, kitna paisa milega hai field mein, sharma ji ke ladke ko dekho, kaha tak pahunch gaya ho. All these questions are just dream killers. Right, right. I agree, but there's one thing that we need to address here. Uh, compared to non-designers, our work may seem great, uh, but when we enter the world of designers, our work is pretty much same at the at each level. So, how do you think we should handle competition, and how can we stand out? Okay. Um, so, how do you handle competition? Is to be a chameleon. Like you should have more than one CV or resume. Every company has different requirements, right? So, why send out a single resume? Right. Curate your CV to fit the profile for for you you are applying for. Uh, and while we are on that topic, I personally don't think that resume is enough. Okay, let's say you're applying for a fintech job, right? So do some projects in that domain before applying. Need not be a live project. A personal project is fine. Uh, in that way, your application gets highlighted. Uh, doing so, in my opinion, is the best way to learn and get better. That's what will get you noticed. And uh, secondly, I think... Uh, you absolutely must take time to curate your portfolio. Uh, that's what people and companies see first. And it showcases everything that you have done so far. Your portfolio can either make you or break you. So be thorough with it. What are your thoughts on this, Rish? Any other inputs you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, so on weekends, I mentor design aspirants on PDP Risk. So it's a website where uh, there are mentors through which you can book slots and uh, get inspired. So uh, from what I've seen, upcoming designers uh, want to make their portfolio, but they are just stuck at the concept phase. Uh, I feel all you need to do, you know, is to start. And uh, by starting, you are already solving the problems and you're already halfway there. Um, and another thing that I've noticed while mentoring uh, these designers uh, is that uh, they, they pick up uh, really complex projects like redesigning WhatsApp, redesigning Spotify. The moment you do that, uh, the interviewer's expectations shoot up. And it's very hard to meet them at that level because uh, you, you end up putting uh, two, three features uh, in the existing uh, application. Uh, that's not something which uh, an interviewer would like to see. So the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, you should put good amount of work uh, and time to think about the problem that you're trying to solve pick up before you know you pick up that project and uh, uh, work on it. So you should be extremely selective of the projects that you add in the portfolio. And uh, this you know comes in very handy when you're giving interviews because the first thing that you present to the interviewer uh, will be the name of, name of the project and uh, along with that the problem that you're solving, right? So uh, uh, when you present that, uh, th there's a sense of curiosity that uh, comes up to people's mind uh, uh, that will eventually come up to the interviewer's mind that uh, this is uh, this is going to be interesting. I want to see what uh, uh, you're going to present. And uh, another thing uh, which I feel uh, you need to add are visuals, um, which is usually missing in a lot of portfolios these days. So recently, I've seen a trend of people showcasing case studies as a portfolio on Notion. Uh, case studies are important, uh, but in my perspective, when you put out, put out case studies in your portfolio, rather than just putting out visuals, uh, uh, it just increases a lot of load. So for an interviewer who is just scrolling through uh, uh, in the selection phase and uh, trying to uh, uh, understand the overview, uh, it's going to be very complicated for him to understand and there's no time for him to uh, understand. So visuals help uh, in interpretation of the information. So visualization is also a critical part of the project. All right. Quite interesting. Uh, so Shresht, uh, when you choose your project carefully and design the portfolio, there are a lot of practical challenges you'd face, right? Uh, right. So tell me, what are your thoughts on perfection? I know everybody goes through this. How do you deal with it? <laughs> Perfectionism doesn't work. Uh, no design can ever be perfect. Uh, as you all know, hindsight is always 2020. 
uh, you'll always find something wrong in your design or something which you can improve after you finish. Uh, so you'd always want to, you know, make improvements uh, in your design. Uh, so uh, while designing your portfolio, you might think of perfecting it first and then uh, think of sending it across to different organizations. But uh, I, I don't think people usually reach that stage very quickly um, because all they think of is uh, how to perfect that design. So uh, I was a perfectionist. I couldn't finalize everything, be it in design or organizing my day. Uh, I like things to be perfect. Um, so personally, uh, I mean, uh, I, practically what I've seen is you, everything cannot be perfect. So you, need, you just need a checkpoint or sort of a deadline uh, to be able to finish things in the best possible way. It doesn't have to be perfect. All you need to do is to complete that thing and keep on improving it time after time. So uh, while we are talking about getting things done, uh, how is your typical day at flight based Tanish? OK, uh, so I'll start with like, I have to say this, uh, having flexible timing is really a boon here. As we know that sub designers for Atko inspiration or motivation will try to uh, So yeah, uh, I reach office around uh, 10, 30, 11, start with team sync, uh, put on some light music and so I start with my daily task, which includes ideation, reviews, design, 3D animation, and whatnot. Uh, so branding is the main aspect I focus on for all the marketing campaigns, events, collaterals, etc., and so on. Uh, along with the uh, visualization of how to execute the plan. Uh, since we are a startup, there's so much freedom to experiment here in design. Uh, every time I've come, uh, every time I come up with uh, new ideas with minimal resources, I learn new stuff on the go. For example, I used to do only 2D designs a few months back, but now I've gotten 3D animation and I'm growing continuously. Uh, it's a fast paced environment here, but I like the hustle. What about you? How does your day look like as a product designer at Flightbase? Hmm. Um, so my day usually starts out pretty early. I'm up at seven uh, and I reach office by 9.45. Uh, uh, at 9.45, we have a daily product design sync up where we give updates on what we are working on and if we have any blockers for the day. And uh, then I get some chai and uh, I'm off to designing. Um, in office, I have uh, a lot of interaction with engineers from uh, web development team and robotics team and UAV testing team. So I'm in constant communication with the customer success team as well, uh, me along with my team members, uh, because they are the people who understand users best. And uh, uh, this collaboration really helps us. Um, so uh, even you and I get in touch uh, every now and then whenever I, we have any illustration dependencies uh, from the app side. Um, so uh, the team usually works in a uh, two week sprint mode, uh, which is very similar to Google Ventures or Asian Smarts sprints. Uh, it's a bit complicated here because the product is very complex and uh, it, it's, it's deep tech, right? Um, so uh, working in design team, you know, you just can't constantly think about uh, the end user because you're a product designer, right? So you need to think about other aspects like business as well. Uh, so for a product to be successful, it's uh, just it just can't be developer friendly in a startup. It also needs to generate value as a business. And uh, that's why uh, I feel that my team uh, is really great at it because uh, we are from different academic backgrounds. We have people from designing as usual as a background. We have people from engineering and architecture as well. So, uh, but Danish, uh, what uh, do you think like, uh, like non-designers have to figure out to get into the career of design? Like, is there any advice that you'd like to give? Um, okay, so this has happened to me personally, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and I honestly, I don't think you should be afraid to switch fields if you want to. Right. Uh, I know saying this is easy, uh, not considering any other factors, but that will help you grow exponentially. Uh, once you know what you want to do with your life, it gets much easier. But until then, keep trying different things. Don't dwell on others to make your decision for you. 
um, for example, um, if you're doing uh, engineering and want to do something in design, start with YouTube tutorials, do a small course, talk to people who are experts in that field. There are so many websites like adpillage.org, talk to them. You can even talk to Shresh, book a slot, get to know the details of the domains, etc., etc. Uh, and secondly, uh, when you get into design, you might feel like, oh, that individual has done masters from this renowned institute. He will be better designer than me. Uh, when someone compliments you, you feel like Ye to kar sakta hai. don't let these thoughts eat you up. Every designer is unique. Uh, so I would like to uh, quote something uh, which I have read earlier. Uh, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. That's why don't give up without even trying. Wow, that's some great advice. Um, amazing, Danish. Uh, so, right, uh, let's now summarize by presenting a few key takeaways. Danish, if you'd like to. Yeah. Go. So, okay, so first thing is uh, don't be afraid to switch fields. Uh, your portfolio can either make you or break you. And, uh, and yeah, I, I guess that's pretty much it. I would like to say. Okay. So there are two more points. Uh, I'm just putting it out. Uh, yeah. So uh, you know, you need to find the right mentors uh, because, like you said, Danish, uh, uh, yeah. finding the right mentors actually uh, is very critical for you to advance in your careers. Because, uh, say, for example, you got some advice from any normal person walking, <laughs> walking on the street, uh, it wouldn't actually make sense, right? So you need to find the right mentors uh, as well. So yeah, I think that's it. And that covers about yeah, everything. Right. Right. Signing off, Gayatri, over to you. So we have a couple of questions. The first question is, how does design thinking change performance of a product or, a, or one's user experience? And which is the best design process tool for analyzing the needs of a user? Right. Uh, should I answer? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Right. So uh, design thinking uh, can change the performance of a product. Uh, because uh, so uh, I'd like to give a few examples, right? Um, IBM uh, uh, at first didn't have design thinking at all. The moment they introduced that, uh, their revenue models changed and everything changed. Uh, so from what I understand, uh, since IBM uh, did not have design thinking, they so so uh, recently, uh, a while back, they uh, uh, published a few courses uh, in enterprise design thinking. And uh, uh, if, if a company who doesn't understand design thinking at first, uh, is now giving out courses, then you can, a, a big company like IBM, right? You can understand the value that it brings to the table. Um, and also there was, there was one more question, Gayatri, could you, uh, question had two parts, right? Yeah, the second part was, which is the best design process tool for analyzing the needs of a user? So, okay. So there are a lot of, uh, so by tools, I'm not able to understand how design process can be a tool, but it's okay. Um, uh, there are a lot of different processes. Uh, uh, and th there's a process called 6D design. There's, there's a process called uh, Stanford's bio, de bio design. There's a process called double diamond design. Um, and all of them eventually have the same goal. You discover something, uh, you merge it down, you uh, have a point of contact where you have pain points and stuff and uh, then you can uh, ideate and then solve that problem right so uh, there is no specific process as such but say for example if you're solving a biochemical problem you would use biodesign process which is offered by stanford right um so i i'm not sure if that answers the question but i'm half yeah no worries um we have another question is learning Figma enough to start off a design career? Um, I, I can answer that. Uh, so 
at least uh, you have thought of starting somewhere. So Figma, may you can write do illustrations as well, UI, uh, and what not. So if you are thinking of starting with Figma, then go with it. Don't stop. Like say, aage kya hoga and all. Just start with it. There's, the there's a reason. Yeah. And there's a Figma there's community as well. There are ready-made yeah, plugins yeah. available and all. So you can even make your work easier with that. Well, thank you so much for conducting ah, the session today. Was saying something. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you? Go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no, no. I, I, I was just adding. Uh, so a lot of people have started sketching out on Figma as well. Uh, so Figma is turning into a sketching platform as well. So don't know what they're planning to bring in the future. So yeah. So does anybody else want to add anything or? No, no, no. It's great. Cool, cool. Well, thank you so much for conducting the session, Danish and Shreesh. It was very detailed. Thanks, uh, Thanks. Again, if anybody has questions, you can hit them up on Discord. The link would be in the chat box. And I think with that, we can move on to our next session. Um, our next session, we learn how to build a hacker mindset and and how to build an entrepreneurial spirit to advance in your career. And uh, for this, I would like to invite Avinash Kumar Singh, who is the founder and CEO of, D of DIY Guru. Yeah, should I start? My voice is audible? Yes, you're audible. You can go ahead. OK, OK, great. Please. Okay. So, thank thank you so much uh, for inviting me. Uh, you know, we we are DIY guru. We, we call ourselves DIY guru. It is, uh, it 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 is basically a sort of do it yourself platform. And just like you have DIY drones, uh, you know, we 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 are primarily working right now in the electric uh, vehicle domain. So it's it's uh, basically DIY electric vehicles, but a part of uh, that DIY also covers you know the automation part, uh, product development, product design uh, in in terms of uh, electronics, uh, you know component and uh, EV component. So if if you look into the 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 whole uh, uh, ecosystem we are working right now, it's basically we we started. Uh, back in 2017, right, uh, with uh, DIY Guru, and and we started as some sort of platform where we were uh, interacting with uh, companies and they're getting some of their requirements uh, as to what is the thing they they basically want uh, in terms of designing a new electric vehicles or designing a new subcomponent of any uh, vehicle. And and uh, we got Robert Bosk, uh, Bangalore. Uh, you know, they, he, they were the first client of us. And and I still I remember uh, it was back in 2017. I was there uh, with three of my you know uh, batchmates. So very early, but yes, uh, you know we kind of kicked off uh, kicked off from that that particular uh, stage. And currently, we have upskilled almost 50,000 of students and professionals all over the world. And we are you know, closely working with industries uh, where uh, we are kind of giving them manpower uh, as like uh, workforce uh, requirement also we are catering. And uh, we are also kind of training uh, and upskilling as well as reskilling. Uh, now we have expanded to uh, this whole industry 4.0 sort of uh, concept. So it's more of a shared and connected ecosystem we are working right now. Uh, in terms of e-mobility, uh, it has been a great journey altogether. And you name any company which is there in India, you talk about uh, Aether, you talk about uh, MPR Electric, you talk about Torque Motors, all of these companies uh, have one or two of our students who are working there. Uh, in, in some cases, there might be lots of ITI and diploma sort of candidates. 
because what happens with them is basically they go for like five, six, or ten days of training, and after that, after the training itself, on the on the eleventh date, uh, we we kind of conduct uh, on-site placement or recruitment drive for them, and the companies take these candidates as a technician uh, sort of role and all. Now, uh, you know the kind of uh, feedback we are getting right now is immense. and the reason why uh, i joined uh, this particular session is because i'm very uh, much in in sort of uh, connect with the student community uh, the the basic concept behind uh, launching this diy group came to us when when we were uh, kind of launching an event uh, that's called mega itv championship event and there we have invited lots of students from other uh engineering colleges right so there we saw that these students were not basically upskilled right they they had this degree like btech degree uh, they had this mechatronics uh, mechanical electrical electronics but the basic skill sets uh, they were lacking right so from there this idea of diy group came and currently what we see is that for a student who is trying to enter into this industry uh, yes degree is a bit important but we ourselves you know when we filter candidates right when when we uh, hire candidates so achal is very close uh, you know to me he we, we have been uh, uh, i think right from the beginning he he knows how the journey uh, we have taken and and achal i mean you see uh, you know right from starting the the gist of uh, the whole recruitment or the or the hiring patterns which has uh, you know evolved from last 3 4 years right it is it is now getting focused more on the skill sets a particular student has got uh, during right, their right. college college time so right even even for us also right uh, at diy group when we go to hire a candidate we kind of look at whether this guy has so sorry <laughs> there is some disturbance outside so when we go to hire a candidate uh, we kind of look for whether he has a uh, uh, contribute participated, participated in competitions in national or international level competition and that right. gives us a edge right right uh, so avinash a uh, quick question there that's a great topic actually and that's how the audience is coming together uh, today where we we went to that journey where uh, we took part in lot of competitions right we did robotics automotive etc uh, can we talk about a little bit more uh, what kind of competitions or what should people do right they could be from a different background but what kind of competitions they can do in robotics automotive deep technologies and where they can find that those things more uh, if they want to learn about the competitions so i think uh... on a on a on a indian context if you ask uh, you know you you have lots of websites uh, which which uh, kind of share this information the the, the kind of competitions which are uh, there in the in the indian uh, ecosystem uh, <clears throat> but but what i emphasize is that you know for for any student who wants to kind of uh, get some get their hands try out for for any particular competitions they should first act as a volunteer so let's say you find out there is any particular society which is working there in your college or is there any senior who has either gone to nasa or has gone to any sai driven competitions right whether it's like uh, uh, the the drone competition that sai used to host or let's say the atv design competition baha competition something like that and then try to kind of attach with that uh, senior and and kind of uh, try to learn how things are evolving over a period of time and then you know he will get to understand that okay uh, this is how i want to enter and this is where my skills are uh, you know better right so 
right that's all. so mean, attaching with right. this near and then right we'll we'll take couple of questions uh, for you so uh, just to understand your journey first so you started as a mechanical engineer but i remember you used to code for websites then you also used to do a lot of marketing events and then you started your own organization so just walk through that journey because uh, you you started as a mechanical engineer people have mindset that they cannot do coding right but you we all know that coding is one of the essential skills with whether you're going into robotics drones etc right you would need such kind of skill uh, as well as other skill sets of course are really important if they are looking to grow in the career so just give us a quick insight what was your journey how did you end up actually building websites for colleges and then marketing that building your own company building uh, taking automobile robotics drones education all together right so i think see everything revolves around uh, so sorry i'm in hospital right now and no there problem. is of noise background noise but anyways no, we can understand uh, so what happens is basically when when whenever you are doing something like it's it's always uh, trying to solve a problem right if you are if you are seeing that some something uh, is there where you can actually come into the picture and solve that particular issue right uh, you should try to get involved into my i i didn't have this thing that okay i will be a website designer or i will be some some uh, uh something like you know i will create something creative or something like that but yes uh there was this thing that okay somebody has to be there to design a good website i was very uh you know i, I was upset with the design of my college and i, right. I you know I, i was like i was visiting others other colleges website and taking a reference from there right. and and even surprise is that even in, during my first year of study i wrote a email to the founder itself right with right. That, that the website is not uh, well and right. and kind of my seniors called me and and they they started ragging me for that you know how can you write an email <laughs> right so right. you have to uh, uh, have a gut uh, if you want to start something and right. just give me a minute just give me sure sorry guys uh, i mean ashish is facing some issues over there of course he's uh, right now attending the call from a uh, 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 situation uh, we will just take a quick bit and move to our next session and see if we can connect back to ashish if possible uh, so let's uh, quickly move to this in time we can uh, guys we can take it forward well um i'm sure we can bring avinash back uh, but till he comes back i think we can move on to our next session uh, we have now arrived at our most awaited session uh, this session will familiarize you with all the hiring tips and tricks that they didn't teach you at college and you will learn how to be a shark in today's competitive candidate pool by building the perfect profile to impress hiring managers uh, for this we have a director of engineering sharvashish das uh sharvashish or as we call him srv is an alumni of iit kgp and he's been leading flight bases engineering team since its since its inception and uh, i would like to invite him to take us through the hacks that can help us land a job at our dream career and alongside that i would also like to invite swati to help moderate the session awesome great thanks gayatri and uh, thanks gayatri great okay. so i hi everyone um i'm swati from marketing and i'm so happy to be talking to one of my favorite people at this place welcome asavi i'm um, uh, again oh by the way that's that's how we call him here as gayatri said you 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 call him sharvashish and he'd be like who's that guy <laughs> so but wait who who are you where where are you from what do you study Tell our audience a little bit about yourself, Asavi. Oh, Swati, so sweet of you. Hello, everyone. Well, what can I say? I have always been a tinkerer, but my alma mater, IIT Kharagpur, really helped me with taking it up a notch. 
since my first year itself i was involved in multiple robotics projects which made me realize that this is going to be my lifelong passion so when the placements came i was very disappointed to see there weren't enough companies aligned with my passion and hence i had to decide to skip my placements it was not an easy easy choice but i guess it was a damn lucky move and then flightbase came into my life luckily one of my friends had done an internship with flightbase and nothing had nothing but praise for the kind of work they were doing i took a look at their website and applied instantly and then replied in a jiffy and i got hired within a day it's been 7 years since then and i have cherished every moment of it i consider myself very lucky to be part of such an amazing team working on solving an important problem when i joined flightbase i was just a robotics engineer today i can code in six different languages but that's not it as a director of engineering i got the opportunity to mentor many people help them with their issues i also got to understand how our users think and how having a customer centric mindset helps us build a better product wow that is so inspiring like you started at the bottom and now you're here asavi but oh my god skipping placements that seems like a scary move and but like now that i think about it going off placement actually increases the pool of options available in choosing a career today right like so to avoid decision fatigue i guess people would want to pursue the most like popular career path for example like a few decades ago civil engineering was the most sought after uh, profession and then i guess it moved on to mechanical then computer science and yeah i guess like it keeps evolving so market demand should that really drive a career uh well swati i believe if you allow the market to drive your career you may never be happy at your job passion is popularity for breakfast if you work on something you are not passionate about just because it was a popular option mediocrity is what you get instead if your job is aligned with your passion it would be much easier for you to pursue excellence and expertise in the field no matter where you are you will eventually face lows and if you are in a job not aligned with you you will end up giving up or worse be miserable instead if you love the job you are in you will pull out of it quite easily in short don't just follow your roommate's dream follow your own right i guess as jim carrey also says this it he says it's better to fail doing something you love rather than like spending so much energy doing something you don't like and then failing at it right so to quickly move on from that like pretty philosophical anecdote for all of those who are poaching jobs let's talk about the first point of contact that you have with a prospective employer right the resume can you talk a bit about the role a cv plays in hiring well you rightly said swati cv is indeed your first hawk crux if i dare say uh, which gets exposed in front of question and potential recruiters you have to make it stand out while of course content is important let me tell you some of the key turn offs which makes me reject a candidate the first one would be add make sure you proofread your cv ask your friends to do the same i see so many cvs with grammatical mistakes formatting issues incoherent font sizes inconsistent indentation so on and so forth the add attention to detail is clearly missing the second turn off would be an unnecessarily long cv three page cvs are a total killer one page cv is enough trust me i do not want to know your who your dad is or even your permanent permanent address remove clutter repeat remove your repeat words remove your clutter keep it concise and precise there are many good quality cv templates readily available all over the internet just use them let me move to content it is imperative that you show your relevant experience keep it concise make sure you showcase how you helped your team solve the problem initiatives you took and how you owned the task but you know what even irrelevant experiences matter what may seem irrelevant to you may just be the thing which makes your profile stand out for example if you are applying for a robotics profile and have done mostly management related work albeit in a robotics group that still counts try to add as much as you can highlighting your initiatives but 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 remember it has to be a one pager 
Wow. Okay. Definitely some good points there. But um, I'm confused. Like, if if I just make a good CV, is it enough to land my dream job? Will Will that ensure that my application stands out? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Swati, but CV is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to join a company which is aligned with your passion, you have to take charge of your career. Don't just expect posting just a CV in a job portal will lead you to your dream job. Go to LinkedIn, pick those handful of companies aligned with your passion. It really does not matter if they have a career page. Hell, even if they have a career page, but it doesn't show a job opening, you can still apply. They will create a position for you if you are a fit. Understand what they do. Try to draft a message which clearly articulates why joining the said company entices you, what sort of value you believe you can add, and send the message to HRs, team leads, heck, even the CEO. I did it. You will, re you will see your response rate shooting up like a star. Another big no-no would be to just spray and pray. I mean, don't just apply to hundreds of companies and pray to God every day for a callback. If you want to build a career where passion lies, take initiatives, take charge. Right. I I guess it's time to break out of the culture where you just like apply for like a hundred jobs and then wait for a response and say, I'm not getting any jobs. Rather, it's better to like handpick the ones that strike your fancy and really work towards fitting that profile and and yeah, and, and getting landing the job. Okay, so I guess we talked a little bit about how it's important to glorify, especially what you've done, even though it, even though it's like not entirely relevant to the job you're applying for. Now, in terms of academic background, can we say the same? Because uh, I, I remember a lot of my friends uh, don't apply for a job because they don't have the relevant degree. So, what can they do there? Like, should they like just give up? What, what do you think? Uh, well, you know what? At Flightbase, we do not even look at the name of the college, branch, or well, even the degree. We have mechanical engineers coding their hearts out, and they are bloody good at it. Designers who did engineering and even computer science. No formal degree in designing, but they just followed their passion, and here they are. Today, knowledge is so democratized. Sitting in a village, a guy can learn about machine learning from the greats, which was earlier near impossible. Going to the US to pursue learning opportunities is now just becoming moot. In fact, we get job applications from candidates who did post-grad, some even from the US, but quality is simply not there, and hence they get rejected. The key myth I would like to burst here is having an MS degree will not guarantee you the dream job. If you want to upskill yourselves, there are several online courses that can help you with. In the end, your skill set, hands-on experience, ability to learn, and solve any challenge thrown at you is what matters, nothing else. Wow, that, that is so counterintuitive. But like when I think about it, it makes so much sense. So actually, that reminds me of another problem. I have also seen people who like apply for the jobs that they want, and then they end up with two jobs in hand, or maybe even more. And they're confused about which one to take. And obviously, I told them to go for the one that pays more, right? So is is that good advice? Well, Swati, you are asking tough questions, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the majority of people would agree with you. But being in the street for the last several years, I would beg to differ. Of course, salary matters. But if the difference is less than 20%, I would say there are other criteria you should look out for too. I have said it a lot, by I, but I guess not enough. Passion alignment. You have to explore the opportunity you are given aligns with your dream. If your dream is to code, but you are given a task to feed data into Excel, probably that's not something you should choose because of some extra salary. The next criteria should be the peer group. What sort of people will you end up working with? It does not mean you should just look for experienced mates, but instead, if they are like-minded, have similar, similar interests and have similar aspirations with respect to career, you should try to understand what they are doing. You will be spending a lot of time with your peers and having good personal relationships will only help you in the long run. Another key attribute would be product versus services. You can have much steeper career growth in a product company instead of a services company. Understanding the customer issues, incorporating their feedback, in short, being customer centric and building products will help you grow holistically. But I guess the holy grail is a product startup. Trying to find a 
product startup aligned with your goal in a startup you will be given lot more responsibilities helping you grow exponentially last but probably an important one you know culture try to talk to the hiring manager or leads about the company culture and see if it aligns with you you know what in fact i'm happy to disclose some of my team members took a salary cut to join flight base because they felt a connection with the vision and they realized they can fuel their passion better by being a part of us and after a year they are drawing a salary much higher than that than what they would have had in the other company okay but um i'd like you i like to stop there stop you there for a bit um i've heard the word culture thrown around a lot honestly w- what does that even mean right i understand i guess it's probably a bit overused term nowadays let me bust another myth for you having free lunches pool tables and what not does not define culture at flight base we strive to build a culture which revolves around mastery autonomy and purpose we want to build an environment where everyone in the team no matter how junior i should say junior of a position he or she is in has complete visibility of the vision we don't just stop there we want everyone everyone to take up ownership of the work they do take complete autonomy in choosing how they want to solve the problem at flight base seniors do not dictate juniors on how to go about doing their chores we hate micromanagement our team is purpose driven we take immaculate measures so that everyone in the team understands why they are doing whatever they are doing the kind of impact a line of code could make is enormous for our users and knowing how this code is going to have a global impact just motivates everyone to strive harder and take pride in the job allow me to borrow a line from three idiots when you have autonomy and clarity of purpose mastery to jhak maar ke piche aayegi right right i guess material perks are nowhere compared to all of these greater purposes in life so wow i guess that pretty much covers everything we we wanted to talk about so i mean i just i'd like to uh, summarize in some in key takeaways like to see what uh, our audience can take away from today um okay so yeah po- like yeah popularity is not as important as passion you shouldn't just follow the crowd shouldn't just go behind what's the more important uh, what's the more popular job at the, at the moment you should always go by what you like and naturally like then giving up is harder when you love what you do because once you are really into it and then you know you you want to push forward no matter what happens you will never give up and it's it's harder to do that and to find that dream job you have to take charge of your career you have to build a good cv you have to do projects outside of work as you mentioned uh, you have to reach out to hr ceo if you if you can and you know go to linkedin find the people uh, find a company that like resonates with you and yeah you mentioned some really good points there so take charge of your career really having that autonomy like you know that that by place really allows you to you have you to have is is something really important and pursuing excellence yeah i guess another thing that sets you apart from mediocrity and sets you apart from the 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 top of the bell curve is is to pursue excellence you have to be you have to strive to be great at what you do perfection of course like as uh, shreesh mentioned in the earlier uh, session is is not something that is like you know realistic but excellence being really good at what you do is something you definitely can do and of course last but not least as you said you you clearly defined what company culture meant it's not just all the perks you get like all the free food that you get all the you know unlimited leaves and all uh, it's it's more about finding those people who work well with you uh, really finding like the kind of constructive feedback that you really need to to learn and mold your way around and build the career around you grow and being given the autonomy to grow is something that's really important and that like that hierarchy is something that that is really important to uh, break in a, in a company and i guess uh, company culture really comes and plays a big role there so yeah that's wow that's a great uh, great great uh, very insightful session srv i'm i'm so happy that we had this conversation so thank you thank you over to you gayatri
yeah sorry uh, yeah before we move i just wanted to add one more point so like when okay. when we talk about company culture uh, it's very important whenever you are you uh, it, you probably most of you are in your final year uh, you should look for more and better opportunities that uh, that is aligned with your passion and not just that but even the culture that of the company that it is portraying how well it matches what with what you want to be so yeah that's about it thanks swati over to you guys three awesome hi i think yeah i think this is really informative thank you for keeping the session we do have a question if you can answer um do you screen candidates based on their prior experience uh, and he says i mean i have experience in java but i have seen on the advertisement that you need mean stack yes that's a very good question so yeah um we at flightbase believe that as long as you know coding languages doesn't really matter as i also mentioned earlier when i joined flightbase i only knew c++ but today i can code in six different languages and uh, so like i from my personal experience i do not look at a candidate and say that oh he has a java experience it doesn't it won't suit us as long as the candidate is willing to go beyond their comfort zone if they they know that they know java they probably don't even know javascript but if they are willing to take that plunge take that um effort to learn a new language i don't think language is a barrier coding is uh, global it's language independent that's nice i think that's a nice note to end it on that it's all about self initiative and your self learning capabilities so yeah thank you so much for giving the session srv swati thank you so much for moderating it this has been really fun um and i think that brings us to the end of our fest um as we conclude the take off fest i would we would like to leave you with the next steps uh firstly that flightways is organizing nestgen 22 which is the world's largest drone autonomy summit and it's happening on the 22nd of february nestgen will have 40 plus experts and over 1000 attendees from 78 countries uh to learn more about nestgen please visit uh the site uh, the website that you can see on the screen right now um another thing we're also providing the opportunity to work with us at flightbase flightbase is hiring for various roles for internships and full time so go to the link displayed on the slide to submit your details and our hiring team will get back to you shortly uh, on this note i think we can end today's stream uh, thank you to everybody for joining us from across the country we really hope to see you in the next edition of takeoff uh, till then i'm gayatri verma signing off have a great evening bye bye